Hello everyone, my name is Diogo Ribeiro and I'm a postdoc at Olivier Delano's group at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. And today I'm going to describe you our recent work on measuring local gene co-expression. So gene co-expression has been very well studied. However, here we are particularly interested in the co-expression that occurs locally in Cs, such as within a stretch of one megabase of DNA. So this kind of gene co-expression is interesting for us because it can occur simply through the close proximity of the genes and the fact that chromatin around them might be open. However, recent evidence also indicates that local gene co-expression might be mediated by the chromatin structure and nearby regulatory elements, such as enhancers. So in our work here, we want to address several questions related to local gene co-expression, such as what is the prevalence of local gene co-expression across tissues and cell types, and whether and how this co-expression is regulated by enhancers and genetic variation. And finally, whether we can actually observe this co-expression in individual single cells. So to study this, we have developed a method to detect locally co-expressed gene pairs from RNA-seq data across hundreds of individuals, while controlling for technical covariates and the number of nearby genes by using permutation of expression levels. So we applied this method across all human tissues from the GTX project, and with this, we found that locally co-expressed gene pairs, which we called here COPs, are actually quite prevalent across all the 49 different human tissues we tested. So in fact, we find between 13 and 53% of genes to be co-expressed with a nearby gene, obviously depending on which tissue. So what actually are these co-expressed genes? So first we saw that, rather as expected, gene pairs that are closer to each other have a higher tendency to be co-expressed than those that are further away. So given the striking impact of distance in determining the co-expression, throughout this talk we compare COPs to a set of non-co-expressed gene pairs, which we call here non-COPs, which are matched for the same distance distribution of the COPs, so that our results are independent from this genomic distance. So to try and understand what determines whether two nearby genes are co-expressed or not, we have measured the predictive ability of several molecular features in distinguishing COPs from this distance match non-COPs across three different tissues. So we found, for example, that features such as the number of insulating CTCF sites between the genes, as well as the amount of enhancers and transcription factor binding sites, all these seem to be relatively predictive of gene co-expression. Other key features we found were the matching of the actual expression values uh, between the genes, as well as the sharing of EQTL signals, which is something we will discuss further on. I would like to point out that overall, together when we mix all these different molecular features, we can actually distinguish COPs and non-COPs reasonably well. This motivated us to look in detail at local co-expressed genes and see if we can actually observe them at the single cell level. So here, instead of detecting correlation across individuals, we now correlate the expression level across the cells of a single individual in order to identify a set of COPs for each individual. So to do this, we focus on undifferentiated induced pluripotent stem cells from the IPC consortium, for which uh, several experiments such as genotyping, proteomics, and bulk RNA sequencing are available. In particular, we use the SmartSec to single cell data from 87 individuals produced and analyzed by Cuomo et al. So using this single cell data set across the 87 individuals, we were able to identify hundreds of COPs per individual. And we found that the number of COPs obviously depended on the available number of cells we had for each individual. Interestingly, when we analyzed in how many individuals each COP is present, we found that most COPs to be specific to one or a few individuals, with only a small fraction being found across five or more individuals. So while this could be partly due to the lack of power to identify COPs in some individuals with low cell numbers, it could also already indicate that COP specificity across individuals is rather high. So on the whole, we discovered more than 4,000 distinct COPs across the 87 uh, individuals, which is actually a number comparable to what that observed in bulk RNA-seq data for the same exact set of 87 individuals. However, while the number of COPs is similar between bulk and single cell uh, data sets, we actually observed many COPs in single cell data that are not replicated in the bulk RNA-seq. And this included also COPs 
uh, that are very highly conserved ac across uh, multiple individuals in the single cell data set. And a closer look at those COPs actually reveal them to be belonging often to the same protein complex, such as the Eastern 1 and 2. And indeed, we found a high enrichment for COPs to be in the same pathway, as well as in the same protein complex. This for both bulk and single cell RNA-C COPs, but particularly for this set of conserved single cell COPs. So I, we think that this indicates that single cell COPs are biologically relevant cases of gene co-expression. So importantly, when measuring transcription of nation transcripts in the nucleus using GrowSeq data, we find that the number of reads between the two genes of single cell COPs is correlated. So this suggests that COPs are not only co-expressed, but actually transcribed at the very same time. Such correlation was actually not found for non-COPs, even though they're also nearby each other, for example. Moreover, using proteomics data available for the same set of IPSI individuals as we, are, we were showing before, we were impressed to see that protein intensities of COP genes are often correlated with each other. And this finding was consistently found across all the 47 samples tested and only observed at very low levels for non-COPs. So this again indicates that much of local gene co-expression we observe might actually be kept until the protein levels. Besides our work with EPSCs, we also mapped COPs for public single cell data for LCLs using the state-of-the-art ShareSeq method, which allows us to obtain both gene expression as well as open chromatin measurements in the same exact cells. So with this data set, we can actually have knowledge for each cell of which enhancer regions are active when nearby genes are expressed. So we can identify enhancers that are associated with multiple genes, which we call here shared enhancers. So doing so, we found that 86% of COPs share at least one enhancer, and that COPs are much more likely to do so than non-COPs. So indeed, on average, we found that COPs were found to share more than three enhancers, where non-COPs only share less than one enhancer. So as we're gaining a clearer picture of why nearby genes are co-expressed, we wanted to understand if COPs are regulated by the same genetic variants. So therefore, using bulk RNA-seq for 358 individuals in this case, we mapped EQTLs to genes and asked whether genes in COPs are regulated by the same genetic variants by identifying cases where the mostly strongly associated EQTL of one gene is also associated with the other gene in the pair. So we observed this sharing of EQTL effects more often in COPs than in non-COPs, as seen previously, and interestingly, while EQTLs in general are enriched in, for example, the TSS region, protein binding and enhancer regions, we found that EQTLs which associate to multiple genes, so shared EQTLs, are more strongly associated to enhancer regions than those that associate with only one gene. So again, highlighting enhancers as the mechanism behind co-regulation of co-expressed gene pairs. So the potential implications of this is that by affecting several genes, these shared EQTLs may be more often implicated in complex traits and diseases. So indeed, we found stronger association between shared EQTLs and GWAS traits, such as hypothyroidism, than for other lead EQTLs. So in fact, we actually observed this pattern across most of the 35 different GWAS traits from the UK Biobank that we have explored, showing that shared EQTLs are consistently more associated to the traits than other EQTLs. So indeed, we found that shared EQTLs, perhaps by affecting multiple genes, are generally more often associated with multiple traits than EQTLs with all affecting only one gene. That is, shared EQTLs might be displaying higher trait pyotropy. So to summarize, I hope I've convinced you that local gene co-expression is prevalent across tissues and cell lines, and that it can be observed not only across individuals with bulk RNA-seq, but also across cells of the same individual. And importantly, we found that this co-expression seems to be retained at the protein level and likely to be relevant for human traits. Our results suggest that we should interpret EQTL and GWAS results in a new light. Since many nearby genes show to be linked through common regulators such as enhancers, genetic perturbation falling in such elements may actually disrupt multiple genes as we saw for shared EQTLs. So we can further think that if several of those genes are implicated in 
human traits and diseases, these genetic perturbations may in turn affect multiple traits and diseases and potentially explain disease comorbidity. And finally, I would like to thank Olivia Delano and his group, as well as our funding bodies. And if you're interested in knowing more about local gene co-expression, particularly across GTEx issues, you can have a look at our newly released paper and access our database, which contains all the COPs produced here. Thank you very much for listening.